G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Wednesday evening here in Australia and the market is up. Market is up ever so slightly, 1.6%, 2.34 trillion. We got under the $2.2 trillion mark. Bitcoin, excuse me, Bitcoin is having a bit of a breakout at the moment on the shorter, term, shorter time frames. We need to wait and see whether it'll confirm and we'll get to that shortly. All right, Bitcoin dominance fallen under 40% again. It jumps above, it falls down below. It's been there for quite some time. Volume is definitely down. That's what has me worried. A lot of people come in and buy. You know, we get these kind of, you know, few percent rises over the next few days and then it dumps. We keep setting in new lower lows. So I'm not sold that we're out of it just yet. Bitcoin price is nice, okay? Just under sort of $49,500. But we're having trouble getting over that $50,000 mark. And that is really what I'm watching for. If we can't break that, and it's got to be a clean break, not just kind of a wick that goes above it, then I think we still have more downside to come. How low? That'll be the question. All right, gas fees, super cheap. Good Lord, $2.98. Haven't seen that in forever. But that really is just a very basic transaction. It's not... Yeah, it's not anything smart contract-wise. All right, market's up. So what's done the best in the last 24 hours in the top 100? All right, render token, 30%. Nice. Curve, 16%. Uh, Iota, nearly 16%. Luna just continues to soar. It's one of the few coins that does sort of continue to go up. Uh, how long it'll go up for, we'll have to wait and see. Atom, nice move. Near protocol. Uh, the graph, so very nice. There's definitely some nice moves here. And look, Matic must be setting a near or new all-time high at the moment. So again, another one of the coins that does continue to go up. I just don't know if this can last. The next 48, 24 to 48 hours is going to really let us know whether this is just, a, a, again, a bit of a fake out. I don't want to say pump and dump, but that's what the market's been doing. Uh, it gets bullish for a day or two. We go up by a few percent and then we drop by even more. And again, just constantly setting in new lows. All right. What hasn't fared so well in the last 24 hours? All right, Yearn Finance aggressively buying back the token. That news lasted for about a day and now it continues to go down. And we have a, other, a couple of other small losses there, but not too many considering the market is up. But let's go to the Bitcoin chart. This is what I'm looking for. So at the moment, we have had this nice breakout again. Look at this, 49,000, nearly 49,500, looking quite nice, but it just hasn't quite set in a new all-time high yet. It's just got to some old support and resistance. We need to see if this will hold or if it's going to fall down. Because look at this, big green candle and a nice green candle to follow up, but then an even bigger red candle. A good size green candle, a little bit of a green candle there, but couldn't follow up and we set in another low. So is that what's happening this time? We really need to kind of get up to that $50,000 mark and a good clean break, or otherwise I fear that this kind of projection is still happening now i don't want to think people i don't want people to think that we are going to come down and cover this cme gap i don't know it's just something i'm looking at as i've said every other video but i just get the feeling like we're probably going to come down and retest forty two thousand again before we make our way up and i think we might have a bit of a santa rally you know the next few days but unfortunately it falls over and comes down i don't think we see any big moves until Maybe January, but I'm thinking more February, March next year. Now, again, never financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. That's just my guess. That's what it is, what I like to call an educated guess. Now, let's have a look at Bitcoin in the shorter time frame because we have a confirmed breakout. We can see here. Here was the downward resistance. If we can break above it, that's why the line's green, bullish. If not, and we break below this red one, then very bearish. But we've been bouncing around here for a while. Now, what we want is these blue uh, lines here. We want to break out, we want to come back down and retest that downwards trending line, and then we want to push up from there. That is bullish, that will be quite nice. But what we don't want is we get this breakout, and then it just falls all the way through and basically comes back down to test this. And then even worse, we come up and get a clean rejection off the downwards trending line, and then really start to find our way down. Again, I'm leaning more towards this one, unfortunately. I wish I could bring more happy news. I just don't know if there's enough bullish sort of news out there at the moment. I don't think we're at max pain just yet. I think max pain is still a ways away. 
And for me, I think max pain is we start to get down into the $30,000 range. Particularly, you know, we could come down to basically 30000 sort of somewhere around about sort of here. I think that would be max pain. But even this CME gap down here between 32500 and $34,500, that kind of seems almost poetic as most CME gaps get filled and that really would have people fearing that you know the bear market's in and it could be. No guarantees we get to the CME gap and go up, but I just wouldn't be surprised upon again. Maybe uh, SEC spot Bitcoin ETF approval, Ethereum 2.0 gets rolled out and everything's working well. Those are the kind of things that I'm looking for that are going to really spark the market. We just haven't heard anything like that for a while. Now, Another thing that we need to be mindful of is it's, you know, there's still lots of hurdles out there that we're facing. So here over in Singapore, a hundred companies fail to obtain a crypto license in Singapore due to tough regulation. There's other countries that will follow suit with this. They really will. I don't think too many countries are going to try and ban crypto, but there absolutely will be some countries that will really try and sort of you know, have tight regulation on it. And as I've said before, I don't mind regulation. Regulation is what we need. We just need good regulation. Look, out of the 100 companies, I'm going to say nearly half of them just kind of, you know, had a punt at it and put some paperwork together and just sort of threw it on the wall to see if it would stick. I reckon about half of them were never any real chance. Then the other half were half a chance. And I just get the feeling, because this is all political, it always is, I think the companies that get the regulations, uh, they will be on the inside of the government over there. That's usually just how it works. They don't usually give license to outside people. You know, they look after each other and things like that. It's kind of like the boys club, you know, uh, not a gender friendly way of describing it, but that's the only way I can think of it. You got to be in the in, you got to be in the it crowd. If you're not in the it crowd then you're really going to struggle. And I just get the feeling like when they do give the licenses, it'll be to people already, you know, close within the government, or not close within the government, but close to the government. Uh, and that is where I think the companies that uh, get the licenses will come from. Could be wrong. I'd be happy to be wrong, but I just don't think so. But look, there is good news as well. Visa partners with 60 crypto platforms to let consumers spend digital currencies at 80 million merchants worldwide. So that adoption is coming. I really do think we've got about another 10 years, another decade of really good upside. Now it's always going to get a little bit less and less. And then I think in about 10 years time, the crypto markets, they do become the new kind of stock the stock market. That's really what I see. You know, they had the roaring 60s in the stock market. That was when the stock market sort of first started. Not first started, but it was in the early days of it. And there was just massive gains to be made. I think that's where crypto is right now. It's the new roaring 60s. Just it's the, you know, roaring 2000s, you know, with cryptocurrencies. And I think in a decade's time, still be plenty of money to be made. But those crazy kind of gains, they'll be a lot harder to come by. All right, last but not least, Kraken. I believe exchanges will be the new banks in the future. And it's things like this that makes me think that. So Kraken acquires a cryptocurrency staking platform to expand its services. So Staked is a non-custodial crypto staking platform which facilitates the secure storage of assets while providing attractive yield options for investors. I.e. like a savings account, what banks did. I really do think they are going to be the new banks of the future. I think the old banks will basically do the same. They will start to have, you know, crypto services and staking and uh, using things like Aave and Compound and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I think that really is the future. And, you know, some will try and, you know, invent their own ones. But unfortunately, you know, people will be able to read code and most likely work out that it's dodgy uh, and they're just not paying really good percentages. That's why I don't think the centralized kind of, you know, DeFi platforms and that will do really well. It'll be the more decentralized ones that will do well because those will be the ones that people trust uh, in the end because they just don't trust the centralized entities, particularly like banks and that. Uh, and that is where I think the market is at the moment. DeFi is going to be huge, but it's still a little ways away. I think I really like Aave. I've said that before. 
No guarantees. It's never financial advice. There's no guarantees that Aave is going to be used. But I know there are some countries already that are looking to use Aave's ARC. It was going to be called Aave Pro, but now it's Aave ARC, and it's for institutions. It's, you know, KYC, AML, and all that compliant. And I think they're looking at giving out about sort of 4%. It could be a little bit less. But what you need to remember is the banks, they will take their fair share of that simple. If there's 4% on offer, you're probably getting 3%. And 3% is better than no percent, but the banks won't do it for free. Hence why I think if you you know can learn how to custody your own, I think you'll be able to do a lot better. But look, if you're just not tech savvy and you know don't care about 1%, which is fine, then yeah, you can go through the banks and places like Kraken and that as well. They're not doing this for free. They're taking a percent, but there's nothing wrong with that if it makes it easier for mass adoption. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. You should be on the gain train at the moment. Let's just see whether it lasts. I hope it does. And I'll see you next time.